Welcome back to Maths 911 and I hope you enjoyed that transformation geometry by Jacques. It was quite a good effort there and hope you are trying it out at home now and making sure that you get that section in your head correctly. We had a caller by the name of Maka and we're just having problems getting him on the line. The line seems to be bad. I think I've been just said that he's there. Maka, uh, are you there? Can you yes, hear me? I'm there. Good evening. Um, good evening. How are you? Welcome to the show. Yes. Maka, I've got your log inequality problem. Uh, yeah. I just want to check that I've got the correct one that you gave me a short while ago. I just missed out something here. I think right. Is it log? Is it log of? Can you see it? Have you got your screen there? Have you got yeah, your TV in front of you? Can, is it correct? Log of x squared minus 16 to the base one third is bigger than log of minus 6x to the base one third. Is that yeah. the problem? Yeah. Okay. Maka, what's your theory on logs? What have you done so far in school? I just want to go to a new screen and write down some of the theory that we need for this. Uh, for this problem. Have you studied log inequalities in school? What? Have you studied it already? Yes. Okay, so if, have you completed the section? Maka, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Maka, have you got your TV set on there? Yes. Can you turn the volume down? Is, is the volume up? Uh, uh. Now, Maka, there are a few things that we learned about logs. In, in our theory, and I just want to go through that. And one of the important things is if you have a number that's not a fraction as your base, I'm just going to use small a here. Can you see what I've done on the screen? Yes. Now, what are the three points to consider if you have this situation? And in this case, I'm making a bigger than uh, bigger than one. Uh, it is the same. Yes. Now, what, what are the facts that we can take out of this equation? I just want to go through some theory. Do you agree that we will say, number one, A must be smaller than B? Yes. Now, what else must be important here in this log inequality? Log a, a is less than B. Yeah, I've got A is less than B. I've also got to make sure that A is bigger than zero. Are you with me? Yes, A is bigger than zero. Yes, now you're getting there. And I've also yeah. got to make B bigger than zero. These are the three things I've got to consider when I do a log inequality. Simply because I cannot find log of a negative number. So I can't allow this number or that number to be negative. Okay. Now what happens if I change this and I say a is a fraction. So that means a is between zero and one. I love this. What happens to conclusion one that I have here? Zero is less than a, and a is less than one. Yeah. In other words, the base that the f the problem has is a fraction. Do you do you remember your teacher telling you that then it becomes a is bigger than b? So what I'm saying, yeah. yes, yes. If if this if this number that we have as a base is yeah. bigger than one, then the inequality does not change. But if it's yeah. between zero and one, the inequality change changes. Are you with me? Yeah. Can you see I've changed the inequality here from a from a less than sign in the original problem to a greater than sign in, in, in our conclusions. The rest of the conclusions are going to stay the same. A must be bigger than 0. And lastly, B must be bigger than 0. Right, so this is the, the, the theory behind the section. And this is what you would have done in your lessons in, in, in one form or the other. So the con things to consider. And of course, when you do a log inequality, it must be logs on both sides. It must be a single log. So I've got a single log smaller than a single log. If it's anything else, then you've got to simplify it to the stage where you can say log of something is smaller than log of something. So this problem that you've given me, Maka, it could have been tougher. You see, this problem, they've already done the first step for you because we've got a log on each side. Can you see that? Yes. And, and there's no more simplification to be done. We can actually drop the logs from this step onwards. Now, if you go back to past year papers, you will see that in lots of cases, they have a complex log inequality where you've got to solve it first and then once you've solved it, then you can drop the log. So this is actually an easier problem, which would probably work about seven marks in an exam. And remember, log inequality problems can go up to 10 marks. So this one would be about six or seven. Yes. Now, do you notice the base that we have here, 
the base that we have here is a fraction. Yeah, they are in friction. So what's going to happen when we drop the logs? What? When I drop the logs, when I, when I say my first conclusion, which is going to be x squared minus 16, I'm dropping the logs off now, yeah. minus 6x, what, yeah. what sign will I put in between? Will it be a greater than sign or a less than sign? A, a greater than. It won't be a greater than sign, Maka, because our, remember our bases are now one third. When your bases are the fraction, the sign has got to be changed. Do you follow that? Okay, yes. I just said that in the theory, remember? If we have a number between 0 and 1, and we do a log inequality, when we drop the logs, the greater than sign will change to a less than sign, or a less than sign will change to a greater than sign. So that's your first conclusion. And our next conclusions must be number 2. I want x squared, I'm just going to do this on a side here. x squared minus 16 must be positive, because we cannot get log of a negative number. And the third one, minus 6x must also be positive because you cannot get log of a negative number. And you see why a log problem, a log inequality is difficult? Because there's now three parts to it that we have to solve. We have to bring those three parts together and come to a common solution. Are you with me now, Maka? Yes. Okay, so now we've got to solve three inequalities and get to a common answer. Now this one, number three, is quite the easiest one, so I'm going to do that one first. How do I solve minus 6x is bigger than zero? We, we divide by negative x. And what happens to an inequality when we divide by a negative number? Doesn't huh? the, the inequality change? So I'm, I'm dividing both sides by minus 6, and this would become x is smaller than 0. So one condition we must make sure is satisfied in our final solution is that x must be less than 0. Yes. Right, so that's, that I've, I've sorted that out. So I just want to highlight that so that in the end, when we're looking at the answers, we know we've got to keep that in mind. Now, the second thing we have to solve is this inequality, which says x squared minus 16 is smaller than 0. I'm just going to do it here at the bottom.